I've never felt so infuriated after watching a documentary at what was what's going on in this this world that we're allowing HOAs to basically do whatever the hell they want. When when did you decide? Okay, I have to look into it deeper after what was happening at, at your place in Grand Prairie. When did you decide, I've got to look into this much, there's, there's something bigger than this? Well, originally, uh, very good question, by the way. Uh, originally, when we got into this, I thought, I, I was working, I was in Philadelphia at Temple University working on a short film on Slumlords. Mm -hmm. And my mom was always talking about this homeowner association she was having trouble with. And I thought, I'm about to attend business school down there. I said, I'll make a few phone calls, write some legislators, talk to the city, tell these people they, they shouldn't be doing that. And uh, I started making contact and they kept replying, don't get involved with civil matters. And then I thought, huh, that's kind of odd. And then I started talking to people. And it was like the, uh, I started to broaden out and look at other HOAs. And I thought, there's no regulation whatsoever. You could, uh, you could be in an HOA, and, and uh, back again to what we were saying even at, uh, at the screening, is they're not all bad, and they're not all bad people, but you have enough of minority of HOAs where bad things go on, and some of them uh, don't keep records, they don't keep financial records, they take money in. Some of them are run sometimes by one person, yeah. but if you want to take any action, against them, you usually have to go out and get an attorney because the attorney general's office or your uh, city legislators will not get involved. It's a civil matter. You know, keep us out of it. Go go get an attorney. And I, was, I started thinking, well, I want to get a little out of civil. Let's go into criminal. So I started looking at a little criminal, looked at Vegas, where you have someone taking over a million dollars out of an HOA. At the end of the day, years later, he goes to prison for a month after removing $1.1 million. Uh, and he pled guilty to felony theft after looting an HOA of fire damage claims where the people needed those fire damage claims to repair their housing to live they don't get it he gets it in a bank account out in california somewhere and those people suffer yeah and it's not right it's not his money the money came from people who are giving that and i think any organ any group of people regardless of what institution you're involved with if you're taking money and you're handing it over to somebody and in this case you're required it's mandatory that you pay those fees you should be able to know where that money's going. There should be an upkeep of financial records. Most HOAs, I would say, are uh, really good at that part, but there's too many of them that aren't, and they don't, um, there's no checks and balances there. And no one stepped in and said, we're gonna put these type of restrictions like they might do with other industries, maybe real estate, medical, whatever, credit card companies, no. but there isn't anything here. And it led me to go out and step further and start asking questions, start asking around. And when I did, that first day I get the camera out in the neighborhood, I'm confronted by a local demanding my home address, like how dare you question what's being set up by the board here. You know, I was, I was amazed at, A, the, the way you were treated, but, like, the, the story that kind of brought me into the, the documentary was uh, the captain when he was away in Iraq. Yes. And... I mean, he made a very simple point. He said, how can they foreclose when they have no impact on the payment, the mortgage, right, I'm still right. making these payments? There's no legality there. There's, it's a signature that I signed when I bought the home that is a piece of paper I probably never even cared about or knew about. How does that allow the power? Like, Can you talk about just the weirdness of this phenomenon that's grown out of basically people wanting to protect an image of an area I mean the whole concept behind of it seems like no one can explain to me why we have HOAs in the first place well it's it's um, industry they're coming in saying and people do they want to upkeep their housing good property values I don't have a problem with that but when it gets to a point like you're going back with the uh, the army captain in Iraq he's over there serving in war his wife didn't open the mail $800 debt.
compared to what they did, I'm like, so what? So what? That she didn't open her mail. You took that board, had an attorney take that $300,000 home and sell it for $3,200 while an army captain's in the Iraqi war. And then the buyer who bought it flipped it for $135,000. That's exactly what happened. That's, you can't dispute that anywhere. That's exactly what happened. And then when they're called on it in the media, there are, everybody's running for cover. Oh, it was the management company. Oh no, it was the attorney. It was, it was this and that. And I'm thinking, we're getting off the property values now. <laughs> we're getting over, um, we want that $800 or we're gonna sell your $300,000 home. And see, the thing of it is, is that a lot of, in some cases, these homes that get foreclosed on at the time, they're usually completely owned by the homeowner. There's no mortgage. Like, they don't have to go through the bank. So it's easier to get access to that home and buy it and then flip it. Because the bank's not in the picture anymore. It's out, the home is owned outright by the homeowner, which is what the case was with uh, Captain Clower. Yeah. But then I, I love a, the, the device of the, the board. Of, of escalating the board as well. Did you always have that in mind with the cases? Like you lined up, I want to tell these cases in kind of this expansive order of this just crazier and crazier. We're going to get to chapter six and you're not going to believe Senator Corona and the rest of these guys. It's like, what? Well, how, how it worked out with the stories, I wanted to cover the HOA in my mom's neighborhood, which was the trailer park over in Grand Prairie. And I definitely wanted to get the situation with Captain Clower. Mm -hmm. But Las Vegas, I brought up Las Vegas. What happened in Las Vegas, and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, it's a long story short, <laughs> but what happened is, it's in the Las Vegas Review Journal. There's a story about this. You don't see it anywhere else. And my question is, you've got uh, Bob Massey with Fox News, for example. Uh, Fox in France. What does he do? He comes out and talks about properties in Vegas. I'm out in Vegas. I'm the property guy. I've never heard anyone at Fox in France or this guy bring up the story of what happened out there. And what happened out there is in 2009, the FBI raided uh, about 12 HOAs. And what happened was, you could probably go back to 2003, where they were getting people on the board about three people on a board, I think they were called straw buyers. They'd go on the board, and as soon as they got on the board, they'd generate a construction defect lawsuit. Wow. So you could probably, in my opinion, get up to about $100 million with all these lawsuits, and they would, uh, with the construction defect lawsuits. And then they found out, how, where are they all, all these board members coming from? They don't live in the neighborhood. Uh, some were former police officers. Well, when they were looking at ballots, the ballots were mailed out of the same law firm that was involved with getting these people on the form, on the uh, board. And the uh, head of this law firm ended up killing herself mm. when the indictment started handing down. Actually, you've had about four suicides that were involved in this conspiracy to basically commit mail and wire fraud. And these aren't alleged, they did do that and people pled guilty to that. And it involves, I, I'm guessing about 40 to 60 people. Uh, the FBI investigated in the beginning, then the Department of Justice, the fraud department with the Department of Justice got involved. And what bothers me is, why doesn't everybody know about this type of story? Why is it just in Vegas? You got a big conspiracy going on out there and nobody's really talking about it. And that's what drew me out to Vegas. But when I got out to Vegas, they were still investigating this conspiracy. So they're not gonna talk to a documentary filmmaker out of, out of Texas about this. So I started looking at other areas and I met Darcy Spears, mm -hmm. who's the, uh, with the ABC affiliate out there doing home HOA Hall of Shame. And she started looking into it, basically shaming people. And that was the question that comes up with the trade lobby that's uh, pro HOA is, these are only isolated incidents. Uh, this is isolated. And Darcy in my documentary said, isolated means one. And there's enough of minority of incidents where this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, a, example, you've got that one guy, Joe Bisky, on the board who's bullying people in his neighborhood. And you've got that guy taking the uh, 1.1 million. And then you got a whistleblower who goes and turns his HOA, a couple of his HOA members in. And let's say that he's completely wrong. You could look at it and say, no, this isn't right or something. 
they didn't do that. They put him in jail after they turned, after they consulted with uh, someone with the Nevada um, Supreme, um, Supreme Court of Nevada, they consulted with them. And then they said, let's report this to the police. And they report him to the police and they get arrested. And it's just, somebody needs to step in. There needs to be a system of checks and balances in this industry. Being able to show it uh, at Video Fest and, and being able to take it to different festivals, obviously you're hoping to, to get more people to notice this. Um, can you talk about what the reaction has been so far? Because you, you played earlier today. Well, you and I both know what the reaction is. <laughs> Anger. And it's there. And in my film, we scratch the surface. It's a survey. It's not a plot-driven film. It's just telling a few little different stories of what's going on with that. What I would eventually like to do is get maybe get more into narrative and get a little bit farther with what is going on inside this industry and bring it up more to the surface so people will take more notice of what's going on. And like I'm saying, I'm not saying they're all bad or anything, but what I am saying is it's enough to where there needs to be some protections for people who are going into a homeowner association, particularly Frisco, where if you look on their, uh, their city laws, uh, many cases with your developers, HOAs are mandated. Yeah. Uh, they're required to be there by some developers if they build a neighborhood a certain way. And the people uh, moving into Frisco will think, well, I don't want to be in an HOA, but I don't want to commute real far if I have to work in Frisco. It's just, there needs to be some protections there for the homeowners. Yeah, I mean, you're forcing people into it. It's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. Uh, looking at, at Senator Corona and and the 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 lack of there being a separation between his government position and his his job what he did and that when you when you showcase that um, it's got to be scary to think that there he might, he can't be the only one that's thought of this he can't maybe not in that terms but for people who are in positions of power that is a direct conflict with you know, HOAs, with the ability of HOAs, with uh, law firms. Um, how deep do you think you can go with, like, making a narrative? How, how many, many stories are there out there? Oh, they're all over the place. All you got to do is get on Google and just put HOA, and there's a new story every day or a new story every week. I knew a guy in Florida who got behind on his uh, HOA dues, they put cement blocks in his driveway so his wife couldn't go to work. Uh. Now, I, got a, I got actually got that on videotape somewhere. And we're thinking, what's going on with this? As far as like the legislator, Corona's not a state senator anymore. Yeah. He's the CEO of Associa. Um, all he did was legal. But it's opinion of many people that there needs to be more of a more of a transparency. If you're uh, in state legislation, maybe you need to be talking more about what you're doing with your uh, corporation. Wow, where where do you hope this documentary goes? I would say not so much the documentary. I mean, I'd love to get distribution and get picked up and maybe add on to what I'm doing. But I want to see it more as a movement, not so much as a as a film, but something to get a uh, catalyst to uh, to get something going on in the industry that will start raising questions with people and say, what are we going to do about this? This is a problem, and it's not just going to go away. I'm curious then, when you bring up the, the narrative aspect of creating something that, that maybe is broader hitting, um, what do you have in mind? Can you give us Well, any? actually, I wrote a screenplay at University of North Texas. It turned out to be more, it was an HOA, but it turned out more into be a, like a step for the wives, <laughs> where actually they were taking over the souls of the people in the HOA. And I believe uh, the X-Files did something similar to that wow. at one time. But where I would want to go with that, um, and you have a film out right now that's talking about... 99 people, Homes. Yeah, with yeah, the foreclosure. Yeah. Where I would eventually want to get is get to a place where it's showing what it's, what it's like where someone is, uh, the board has taken over their neighborhood and maybe uh, show that there's no recourse where no one knows what to do to fight the situation they're in. 
because in some states, now they did remove it where they could do the non-judicial foreclosure with homes in Texas a but few years ago, state. but not so much with condominiums, but not, yeah, not in every state. They can um, sell your house on the courthouse steps and the HOA never had any equity in that property at all. But it's just like, oh, we got a contract and we're gonna take your house to cover a debt uh, less than 1% of your home. So, and that's where anger will arise, <laughs> particularly in Captain Clowers, because I remember when that happened. People were very angry. How dare you take a Iraqi war, uh, somebody fighting in the Iraqi war, and say, oh, while you're in the war, we're gonna give your house away. And I mean, there was outcry. People got very angry about that. Me being a veteran from the Marine Corps, you know, it really ticked me off quite a bit at the time. I went, I uh, started contacting his wife and I, uh, eventually him, and I said, Mike, I said, I want to meet with you as soon as you get back. How, how uh, long did it take you to set up these interviews and, you know, how much time was spent with all the interviews? Because you do go all over the place. Well, the thing with uh, Houston, Austin, and the Dallas, usually, well, mostly Houston and Austin, I've been in contact with people sometimes up to a year. And I'd say eventually I'm going to get a film crew together. We'd like to come interview. Vegas was set up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And I'd been in contact with uh, Professor Solomons, who's also in the documentary, Gary Solomons, yeah. psychology professor. He let me stay at his home and do all my interviews right there. And we start bringing people over. But there would be late night phone calls. Uh, and people didn't know who I was at the time. So I would have to speak to them, you know, while maybe four or five hours on the phone. Some people wanted to meet right away. Uh, it's as if, well, Rodney, we know this professor and we know he's okay with you, so we'll meet with you now. Because people are hesitant, they don't know who I am. Yeah, and no one's really helped them or in this situation. No, somebody's saying, oh, a documentary. And the other thing about this piece that I did, no one, I didn't see anyone else doing it at the time. I mean, you see some films and say, well, I've seen that film a thousand times. And I thought, nobody's really... No one's touched this. Touched this. Um, to get on a, a personal note, you started this because of your mom. Can you give us an update of her situation? Well, her situation is like a roller coaster ride where you've got new board members going in and out. Very similar situation going on uh, where she would... Con where are the receipts? It's usually what it is. Where are the receipts of all the money we're paying? You've got this income coming out here. Where are the receipts for that? Oh, we don't keep receipts here. And then there's all these questions, and my big question that I brought up, why does anyone ever do where my mom lives in the Property Owners Association? Why don't they ever do an audit? They never do an audit. They say, they, well, we, got, we did one one time, but there's no accountability, there's no checks and balances. Um, and that was the situation. That was a big part of what got me started. But the other part that got me started is whenever I see a situation where you have a uh, similar like your Davy and Goliath type of story where there's no recourse, you're, you're standing up against, uh, and particularly in the bad ones, where there's a villain. And the protagonist in the story, you would say, has no recourse. There's nowhere for him to go. In a way, you could say my film's a tragedy. Yeah. You know, to, to kind of get, hopefully, people to, to find that David, tell us uh, where we can find more information about the hoax and, and, and hopefully get the word out, because I think people need to see this documentary. Um, well, thank you for saying that. Um, right now, I'd say uh, the hoax, uh, film com is my movie website, but more particular, um, thinking more of a uh, better place to go would probably be on Facebook mm -hmm. for the hoax and then you can look up my Facebook page Rodney Gray G-R-A-Y and which you can go on there and figure out the hoax because I've got my uh, back screen on my Facebook has got my movie on it but you could go and go there and also locate your uh, local activists there's usually activists in every state that you can go to to post bulletins and to write letters or whatever you need to do well, thank you for bringing this to Dallas, and I know it's a, it's a personal film because of all that your mom's had to go through, and, and thank you for telling it, though. Sure, thank you.